Midweek meeting racing takes place out at the Vol on Wednesday, the 17th of April, 2024. Eight races on the program with race number one set to get underway at 12.35. It will be the start of the bar pot. Place accumulator commencing with the running of race number two and the pick six in race number three. Joining me on the line is Alistair Cohen. And Alistair, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks, Rahil. Sounds a bit sacrilegious to say we go into the Vol on a Wednesday and that uh, we're racing at Hollywood Bets Gravel on a Thursday, but that's obviously due to the Bloodstock South Africa National Yearling Sales to uh, get all the relevant people into, uh, well, as many of the relevant people into the same building as possible to uh, to hopefully make a little bit of history on Thursday and Friday. Um, this card, Rahil, it's, it's you know obviously no Grade 1 card, no Grade 2 card, no Grade 3 card, but it's my type of card. I think there are a few horses here that I've been following for a while that have done me a few favours, so um, hopefully we can get back on track on this Wednesday out of the Vol. Well, let's get into it. We've got uh, an, a, a few races where the two years are taking on all the company, and uh, race number one is one of those over the 1,200 metre trip. It's a maiden plate, and uh, here your favourite is number 10, Gorgeous Klein, at 14 to 10. Lead the charges at 5 to 2. Craig Zaki takes a ride there for Michael and Adam Azzi. Illid Orange at 9 to 2. It's Cabello Matsignane for Lucio de Larcus, and then it's uh, Tana Marie at 11 to 2, 10 to 1, and better by all those. Now, this contest, uh, these two two year olds should surely dominate uh, in this race here. And this was gorgeous, Klein. There was uh, a bit of talk around him, quite a bit of support as well. And he ran a very nice race on uh, local debut. And I think with that run under the belt, he, he should have tightened up quite a bit. And could he be the horse that they all need to uh, beat here? I think the race revolves around the two-year-olds here, Raheel. Just the first bit of uh, reference that I want to bring up is uh, we down the Vol original track today. And inside draws, according to the configuration of the track, should have an advantage. So just bear that in mind when, when having a look at the card and, and structuring your play. I think these two two-year-olds will fight this out. Gorge and gorgeous Klein, as you mentioned, two fair runs in PE and a very good one in, in Joburg. Uh, was less than a week earlier at Future Africa with dismal form. It beats him just two runners in his entire career came out and won having followed the same type of pattern. So Gorgeous Klein's clearly got a lot more going for him. He was beaten by a nice horse in the form of uh, one more on debut. I was at the VAR that day and, and one more looks like a very, very smart horse as does Gorgeous Klein. I think there are horses in behind that, that could be okay as well. So uh, Gorgeous Klein would be my top selection. Number 11 lead the charge. Cannot be ignored. First run in Cape Town was fair behind Banff, well-bred son of Lancaster Bomber. This and uh, his first stars in Joburg could have been a lot probably could have been a lot worse um, considering he was drifting from 14 to 10 to 4 to 1. I'm not convinced that 1400 metres was his best trip down the Vol straight so I think coming back to basics is it his favourite? It should go well enough in uh, race number 1. So 10 from 11 for me in the opening leg of the bar pot. Shouldn't miss the bar pot with those numbers anyway. Yeah, that's race number one. It does look to be a two-horse race between the two two years. Moving along to race number two, and this is uh, Phillies and Mayors 80 handicap that will be run over the 1600 meter trip. Quarter past one is the off time, the start of the place accumulator. And here we've got um, Miss Hannigan, who is the favorite at six to ten. It's 18 to 10 about Gimme a Light. She's found quite a bit of betting support, 28 to 10 into 18 to 10. Andy's girl is at 7 to 1 form update. She ran 7 beats in around 3.5 lengths over the weekend. So, must monitor whether she will uh, take a place or not. And um, then it's 10 to 1. And better by all those. Now, Miss Hannigan, facile winner last time out. She's gone from a 78 up to an 86, given that she won by 6 lengths. And uh, it wasn't the strongest field that she did beat. She obviously dropped in the ratings and. It was the right type of race for her to uh, get that victory. But she seems to be a filly that um, has uh, taken to new surroundings quite nicely. And she's obviously improving nicely. And uh, with that win under the belt, her confidence would no doubt be up. But she takes on a filly in the form of number two, Gimme a Light, that has got form at this level at, uh, at current time. Well, you know, Rahil, my, my issue with this race is that first... I anticipate number three Andy's girl will come out um, so it's a field of five the PA is my suggested bet so I reckon you'll be more than safe with uh, with number one Miss Hannigan and the place accumulator but can you have a bet on her at six to ten and luck to, to chop up a little bit more uh, over a mile for the second time in her career I know she won with contemptuous ease over 1450 metres at her last start beating Empress Games so suggesting that the extra distance probably will, will be within her radar now but not one 
terms of our thought that 1600 meters would be the trip that she's looking for she might ultimately reach the trip but i can't see her powering her way and, and hitting the line hard over 1600 meters but none of that matters if she wins and if she survives the first leg of the place accumulator and then i suppose you can make the same argument for number two give me a lot who's another one that's also got to be respected especially with the money around for this daughter of give me the green light but she too's run four times over a mile and, and also not ripped up many trees so that is the slight concern i have with these two horses at the top of the boards but like i said in a small field you've got to take your chances you i don't think looking for results here is worth it i think the value in the race now as with number five national star when i say value um you know, she she might actually come out and win this race, but obviously you're not going to get any any value in the in the place pot here, in the, in the places with number five national star. So just perhaps an exacto horses number five national star box her up uh, to run to the first two with number one Miss Hannigan who has the form and Barat should do so. So I'm banking number one Miss Hannigan in the place accumulator. She should run into the first three, but national star is my money maker here. I'm glad you touched on national star because when you have a look at that run to Platina Princess and that was just at their last start. There was very little that separated uh, Give Me a Light and National Star. And you've got one at 18 to 10 and one is at 10 to 1. So there's clearly a lot more value with number five and uh, could be a nice find there from Alistair National Star for the Sean Terry Yard. Siando Sosibo takes a ride and that is race number two. Race number three, maiden plate over 1,400 meters. 13.50 is the off time. The start of uh, the pick six and uh, we'll have a look at the fixed odds betting market first. Deception Past is at 2 to 1. Mocha Frappe at 3 to 1. 5 to 1. Radiant TT. 11 to 2. The Cane Train it's 7 to 1. And Better Bar. Those scratch number 2. Secret Cord. Now, this horse, Mocha Frappe, found all the money in the world last time out when returning off that very lengthy layoff. And we were obviously of the opinion if there does, uh, if there is support around for him, well, then we need to uh, take that uh, quite seriously. But he ran quite a dismal race. He was beaten. Just under 10 lengths behind Salute the Flag and the blinkers are going on. He's having his second start, uh, second run after race. So there's no doubt that he'll strip a much fitter horse and he could certainly get into it. And then number one, Deception Pass. Now, he ran behind Volta Fast. Now, at the time, that form line would have, wouldn't have uh, looked too great. But there's been two winners, Al Akhtar and uh, Volta, Volta Fast coming through to uh, win from that form line. So that's uh, held up. Rahil, you know, I've looked at this race long and hard because, you know, horses like Mocha Frappe, uh, Trom Batista, all got to be horses that, that are probably ready to win. Um, I expect Radiant Heat to be somewhere there as well. The cane train can only improve. But I've come down to the fact that Deception Pass, having a second run after a long layoff, having run three and a quarter lengths to Tyrion Lannister, who's won the Newland Stakes and won again in gutsy fashion on the weekend at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth, with us lightly needing the last run, in my opinion, not given a peach of a ride by Alex Turtle in the Work Riders race last time. He probably also wasn't ready for a 1700 meter race straight off that uh, six month break i think deception pass is going to be more ready for this race coming out of that run than number three marco frappe yes the blinkers can make improvement for number three marco frappe i'm of the opinion i don't want to put words into alec laird's mouth um, and tell him what to do but i'm of the opinion that he might need to be gelded as well but this is probably the first step to getting there and if there is improvement maybe get the maiden out of the way before gelding him um, because he's obviously been stop start throughout his career he's a lovely looking son of the united states but probably not just putting it in although you can also make the argument that he would have needed his last run and needed it quite badly although the uh, the support of Marco Frappe does not suggest that there was obviously some confidence from some quarters but I think number one deception pass also with the advantage of an insider's draw is going to be in his favour I think he'll be yeah, like I said, better with that last run under the belt. And I think if not winning, he'll be in the first three. So I've banked him in the place accumulator. The horse that I think has just got the most claims to be the biggest danger, if you're uncomfortable bankering him, is number three, Marco Frappe. That's one and three in race number three. But uh, number one, deception pass, a confident top choice in the start of the pick six. Moving along to race number four, which will be the start of jackpot one, 1,400 meters of distance. It's a maiden plate for fillies and mares. And the off time is 25 past two. Having a look at um, the fixed odds of betting market, Kylie's Angel is at five to two. Olivia's Way is at nine to two. It's seven to one about Sneak Preview, eight to one Messalina, twelve to one about Ice Cap, Like a Butterfly, Mother City, fourteen to one, and Better Ball. Though, so there's certainly a lot of uh, runners here at double figure quotes that uh, would uh, attract uh, the eyes of punters. Now, number one, Kylie's Angel first run up in the high fell for uh, Tony Peter last time out. 
She ran a fair race beyond uh, Questo Equello. She was only beaten uh, around one and a half lengths, and uh, she's a filly that uh, has been priced up as a favourite. So she's likely to go well. And then you've got uh, this horse, Olivia Zwei, who I thought finished off a race very, very nicely last time out. And she's got that high, draw, high number draw, which, as you alluded to earlier, may just be a disadvantage. But I like the way this uh, daughter of Path Fork has improved with her, with her two starts under the belt. And that's the reason and the only reason I've, I've sidestepped number 16, Olivia's way, which I will not do in pick sixes and jackpots for what it's worth. I make this the second hardest race on the card because um, I'm a little bit puzzled by everything that's going on. Kylie's Angel, my top choice, bookmaker's taking no chance for obvious reasons. Drawn on the inside, first run for the new yard, hence that she was ready to win in Durban with Gareth Funzale. So I'd, I'd anticipate that there could be more to come from number one, Kylie's Angel. Um, the yard has been a little bit flat of late, but I don't think that'll last forever. So number one, Kylie's Angel deserves her place at the top of the board. She's a natural inclusion. But how excited and how uh, confident can you be with number one, Kylie's Angel, with horses like 14 Messalina and 15 Mother City as my backup in this race. Messalina also showing good improvement all the way. Uh, Marco van Rensburg takes her out. Also an inside draw for the staunch of Quarari. So she's got to be alive. And 15 Mother City caught my eyes to an extent last time. She stayed on quite nicely. Muzi Yeni rides for Cory Lenzi. The extra distance, I know she tried it before. That was her best run, having run a length behind too late my mate. I think 15 Mother City is alive with a chance here in, in race number four. But then, those are just my PA numbers. In the pick six, there are all sorts of horses here that you cannot leave out. I think there are also plenty that you can put a pen through. 16 Olivia's way being one of those that you that you have to include. I think number six someday maybe is going to run a better race back, back home at the Val. She seems to down tools at Turfentain for some reason. I think like a butterfly is not far away from winning either. There's a lot of free in Seattle for me, but if you use that at face value, then number four, Villa Samaya has got like a butterfly beaten. So all of those horses have got to go into the mix, but um, from a PA perspective, of 1-14-15 for me but uh, all the horses mentioned do have some sort of winning chances I think you might get a little bit of a blow over in the first leg of the pick six yeah? not with something at 100 to 1 but maybe something at about 7-10 to 1 somewhere there that could spoil the apple cart I think uh, this horse honourable member needs to be included into the pick six as well she doesn't have the draw but last time I, I watched that race and she moved up like a winner going through the 300 but uh, she just sort of uh, peaked on her run so I think with a uh, with a more senior rider aboard who will be able to hold her up for slightly longer I think she could uh, she could certainly get into the play at around 14 to 1 but race number three definitely a very very trappy contest if you're looking past number one Kylie's Angel race number five 1500 meters the distance it's a Feliz and Mayor's 72 handicap that will get jackpot two underway three o'clock is the off time and uh, in this race, you've got Empress Game, who is the favourite at 28 to 10. 4 to 1 about Higgledy Piggledy. It's 11 to 2. Count your chances. 7 to 1. Secret Recipe. It's then uh, 8 to 1. And better bar those. Now, uh, Empress Game, she was um, well beaten uh, last time out behind that uh, Philly Miss Hannigan, who runs earlier and in a far stronger race. And uh, she remains on a mark of 60. She goes 1,500 metres for the first time. I'm not convinced that she's a horse that will be able to see out the distance. I know last time out she ran second over 1450, but she was miles back in second position. And at the end of the day, something had to run second. I, I, do you think that uh, 1500 meters could suit her, or do you feel that she's just an out and out sprinter? Just I, th I think she's at 1500 meters, and I'm also not. I'm all. Just touching on the eight horse there, Empress Game. I've got at the door. Yes. You're speaking about the eight, Alistair? Yeah, she, she's banging on the door. So, yeah, number eight, Empress Game. I, I think she'll be stretched over over 1,500 metres, truth be told, Rahil. Although I've got her in just because she's banging on the door. Just go back to the market, if you don't mind, Rahil. Uh, what the Azzy horse has priced up? Higgledy Piggledy and, and uh, Secret Recipe, just quickly. Uh, you've got Higgledy Piggledy at four to one and Secret Recipe at seven to one. I thought they'd be the other way around. I like number five secret recipe here. I make her a big chance. Stable jockey, well not stable jockey, but first choice at the moment, Muzi Yeni takes her out of number five seat secret recipe. He could have ridden number one who we rode last time out. Craig Zaki doesn't ride much for the as He's around sometimes, but not much. Um, I think number five secret recipe definitely warrants a lot of value here at seven to one. I know hold on the Miss Hannigan run last time out um, behind Empress game. The weights suggest that she might get a little bit 
close to being half a kilo better off, but I'm there, that this distance will be more within her grasp than Empress game. So it, logically, it doesn't make any sense to say, right, I prefer one over the other by a considerable margin. Hence, both are in. But I think Secret Recipe is going to get much, much closer to number eight Empress. I Pierre Cashier with all Pierre Stratum goes all the way to the Val for one ride. Uh, Tung Tai uh, stays on. The blinkers come off this daughter of Quarari. That might work for this daughter of Quarari, having Pierre Stratum riding her the last two. That's probably a request from Striker. So for Cashier was all also just gets into the play. Not one to rely on, but um, I'm just not going to let her run loose because there are a few clues there with her. Yeah, I remember with number 5 Secret Recipe in a penultimate start, drawn on the wrong side of the track and she finished off a race quite nicely behind Mia Fiore and on that run, there shouldn't be too much to choose between herself and number 4 from the Joey Sommer yard, so those could be two nice value plays here in race number 5 and two nice finds from Alistair. Moving along to race number 6, the Phillies and Mares 80 handicap, 15, 35 is the off time, 1000 meters is the distance and um, your favourite in this contest is horse number two on cue at three to one. 11 to two about Articuno. It's uh, 11 to two in the ether. Law of success is at six to one. It's seven to one. White Hills, Heirloom, and then it's eight to one and better about those. Now, on cue, course specialist, track and trip suits her. She's got a five draw. She's the one to beat, Alistair. Do you have money for on cue? Horse number two on cue there, Pilasande Mkroli takes a ride for uh, Paul Matchett and uh, yeah, three to one in the market. Uh, last time out, uh, ran a, a good third behind uh, Woman of Fame and she was only beaten one and a half lengths. And it, she's a horse that uh, we thought last time out would run a huge race. Track, which was always a little bit of a concern for me going around the turn and she ran nicely behind women of fame but i've been waiting for this at the vol down the straight third run after a race stable jockey on board ratings come down from an 84 lately down to an 81 um third run after a race there's just too much for me in her favor I was a short head away from bankering her in the place accumulator. I didn't. I've backed it up with number eight, Arta Kuno. When I look at it now, I don't really know why because I'm so keen on number two on Q. So maybe we can double up two for the price of one in the uh, in the sixth race on the card. I've just I've just been waiting for this for too long with number two on Q, and I think she's most at home at the Vol, where she was based for a lot of her career with Ashley Fortune. Yeah, I think it's all about catching uh, horses at the right time, and I think uh, Wednesday at the Vol could be the right time to catch number two on Q. 3 to 1 the current price. Hopefully, that uh, you can take your chances and possibly banker in that place accumulate. And at around 3 to 1, if you're in a camp, perhaps even a strike on the head there with uh, this uh, runner from the Paul Matchard yard. Moving along to race number 7 now. And race number 7 will be run over the 1000 meter trip. It's an MR72 handicap. 10 past 4 is the off time. We've got um, Kinchin Shah at the top of betting boards at 22 to 10. Duke of Rock is at 5 to 2. He's found a touch of support from 33 to 10. Number 7, Cityscape at 7 to 2. And then it's 7 to 1. And better ball those. Now, Kinchin Shah, he's been holding uh, form quite nicely. Run up in his last two starts. And last time out, he just found Amber Rock too good, who was dropping in class and uh, was the right horse in the race. And Four kgs off the back will certainly make a difference with this uh, son of water winter. So he's no doubt going to be a massive player. And then you've got Duke of Rock who met uh, slightly stronger last time out and is dropping in class. And he's another one that uh, does have a nice draw. And then I don't think you can uh, ignore your, your horse number one, Stormy Seas at around 7-1. to one. He's the type of horse that can always pop up. Yeah. Stormy Seas is capable, but Raheel, I've, I've taken the stuff. Very hard horse to beat you. Um, you know, Trent Mayhew taking four kilos off the back is probably a master stroke from Lucky Hudalakis. His yard has come to life in a big way, which was always going to happen. We know how formidable Lucky is at the VAR. Kinchin Shah has been so disappointing for many of his followers, for many of his supporters. He's been beaten red hot favourite on a couple of occasions in his life. Last time there was money for him, but I think he was just outrun by Amber Rock over the closing stages, who has always had the ability of, of turning over a few nice horses, probably hasn't quite lived up to those expectations. So I think Kinchin Shah returning to the VAR is going to take all the beating here. Again, not one that you can trust, not one that you can climb into to the, at the price and, and put the rent money on um, just because he 
it doesn't win too easily and or win too often rather. But um yeah, I think he's probably come to the right place for him to, to just about win. As you mentioned, Stormzy's on that run at Turfentine where Stormy sees turn him over. Kinshin Shah's got a valuable turnaround at the weights. That's by virtue of Ben Mayhew's four kilo claim, but I think I think Trent's actually won away from losing his claim. Hopefully by the time they race he's not uh, he's not minus two and a half because the four will come in very handy on Wednesday. Three Duke of Rock got to get into the into the reckoning as well. Seven Cityscape is a horse that's banging on the door. I don't think Inner Fix is running without uh, without hope either. But I think Kinshin Shah, the most reliable from a PA perspective, um, I think this is his time. I actually think he'll win. That's horse number two, Kinshin Shah. Quite a bit of confidence there from Alistair. Perhaps a double could be on the cards. Race is six, number two, and race seven, number two. That's on cue. And Kinshin Shah, two confident selections here from Alistair for racing out at the Vol on Wednesday. Race number eight, the final race on the day. And this is uh, Phillies and Mayor 68 handicap over the 1,000 meter trip. 16.45 is the off time. And uh, Pinatubo is your favorite at three to one. Golden Chandelier is at 33 to 10. 4-1 to one about Red Carpet Girl, it's in 8-1 to one and better ball though. So the two two-year-olds dominate the betting market here. And you've got Golden Chandelier, who's a two-time winner with 59.5 on the back. And then Pinatubo, who won on debut over 1,000 meters when there was a lot of betting support around him. He just made it home and that form line has uh, proven to be very, very strong. Yeah, bosom buddy and we were... Will Rock you coming out and, and franking that four, making it two from two. And I think Far Reaching is also just going to win from that form as well, as simple as that. But uh, oof, I was more confident about every other race on the card. This is not easy because of the dynamic of the two year olds here, Raheel. I'm, I'm a bit gun shy. They might well be miles ahead and miles miles better than, than everyone else in this race. That's not beyond possibility. So Golden Chandelier and Pinatubo, numbers 6 and 11, are naturally in the players as good competitive winning chances. But how easy is it going to be? It's not going to be easy. Taking into consideration the weight for age allowance of 10.5 kilos. So they might, it's guessing game for the handicapper at this stage of the game. Golden Chandelier might be better than an 88. Pinatubo might be better than an 83. They also could be a lot worse than the ratings that they are for winning their maiden races. So, so who knows? It's an absolute guessing game. They either run 1-2 or they go completely missing. Golden Chandelier and Pinatubo. And if you believe that there's a possibility that they go completely missing, then that opens it up for a whole lot of other horses. Fennec Fox, first run for the New York. She's been on my radar forever. She's got an outside draw, which is no good. If she improves and comes back to what she once showed she could be very dangerous her highest rating was a 93 she's down now to a 64 there's another rating dropper here gallivanting who have condemned no more until she wins gallivanting from a 101 to a 67 so gallivanting i'm sidestepping here but non fennec fox i'm not uh, then the crawford runners i think are alive as well 13 simply magic and 15 de la sword they are what they are they're not going to hollywood they they're certainly not going to be uh, taking on computer form sprint opposition anytime soon but i think at this level with an inside and a middle draw informed jockey cabello matsignani is and stable jockey has chosen 13 simply magic but i'm not convinced there'll be much between the two crawford for runners. So I've put both of them in for good measure and I'm hoping that they'll both run quite well. It's a race where absolutely anything can happen. If there's anything on Punter's radar, don't be afraid to put it in either. If you want to feel safe going into the final leg of the pick six, go field and go short in other races. If you like on cue and you like Kinshin Shah like I do and also Deception Pass, then those could be your bankers and then load up in the other two legs. It's either the two yours or absolutely anything. And race number eight, which is the final race on the day. We're going to move along to the suggested bet now. And, and, and uh, Alistair will take us through suggested bet, uh, which is uh, a place accumulator. And that begins with the running off race number two and will uh, end uh, in race number eight. And uh, Alistair, take it away with that PA. Yep, that uh, gets underway. It could have passed one so little. Later start on this Wednesday, it's Banker 1, Miss Hannigan in uh, what's a small field, I'm sure she'll run in the first three, but Banker 1, Deception Pass, got horses in leg three of the PA1, Kylie's Angel, 14, Messalina, and 15, Mother City, by uh, four, Cashew Resort, five, Secret Recipe, and also number eight, Empress Game. But two and eight, I probably should have gone Banker 2 on cue, but on cue and Arta Kuno, but Banker 2, Kinshin Shah, and then the final leg of the place accumulator, all sorts of scribbles in this race, six golden chandelier, nine Fennec Fox at any price, 11 Pinatubo, 13 Simply Magic and 15 Dillas Sword and that last race just becomes a matter of survival.
So that is Alistair Cohen's uh, place to accumulate. And uh, as I mentioned, maybe a nice double for the guys to get involved. Uh, two horses that Alistair quite likes on the day. Race 6, number 2, on cue. And race 7, number 2, Kinchin Shah. And that doubles at around 12 to 1 with the Hollywood bet. So if you are keen on those two horses, well, 12 to 1, the price about that double. Alistair, thanks very much for your time. It looks to be a good day's racing out at the vault. Obviously, um, competitive. But uh, I think uh, the place accumulator could be a nice bet to catch. Yeah, I think so too. I think it'll pay well, especially going into the final leg. I think whatever it's doing going into the final leg, whatever the dividend is, it's just about double, maybe even treble. Thanks very much to Alistair Cohen for his time. All the best with the racing out at the Valland Wednesday. Hopefully, it treats you well.